So Heart Breaching is one of the most core mechanics of Rainbow Six Siege and has been ever since its launch. And by now, you're probably at the point where you can tell which hole was made by which operator. I mean, take a look at this one. I'll give you five seconds to guess which operator made this hole. If your answer was Thermite, you were incorrect. This was actually made by Habana, and stay tuned for later in the video where I'll show you how to make a hole just like this. So reinforcements in Rainbow Six Siege are an extremely interesting game mechanic, which can be played around with in many different ways. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get the most out of all the different hard breaching devices in the game, and basically exploit these hard walls to your advantage as much as you can. However, I quickly do ask if this is your first time on the channel and you do go and enjoy this video, consider subscribing as we are on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and all your support means the World. So we'll start with the original hard breacher in the game Thermite. Back when the game first launched, he was the only breacher up until Habana released, meaning that he was an absolute necessity to bring on every attack. Now, of course, now in the game, the weight has been heavily lifted off of Thermite's shoulders, and although there are alternatives, Thermite can still be seen as the best hard breacher in the game by many people. So of course, you've got the classic simply just using a Thermite charge on a reinforced wall. You've cleared the bandit battery, the mute jammer, the electric law, and you simply breach the wall. That is the most bog standard breach in the game. But let's take a look at this scenario once again and let's say the wall has a bandit charge or a cade claw on it and you cannot clear it you have no other operators on your team who can clear it maybe you're in like a 1vx situation and simply you need to open the wall but you can't clear the gadget off the other side well this is where as thermite you need to start thinking outside the box and start exploiting the environment around you so for starters if you have a wall that is reinforced and beside this wall directly touching it there is another breachable wall which hasn't got anything on it it may even be soft just like this example i am showing in theme park you can actually use your exothermic charge on the wall beside it which has nothing on it and it will actually breach the electrified wall basically ignoring the bandit or cade charge which is on it this can be used in many scenarios and is extremely useful however what if there isn't a wall like this beside the breach and you still need to clear the wall well we gotta continue thinking outside the box we're gonna head over to oregon on small tower here and we're gonna do one of the most common attack strategies with thermite which you'll see on this site i'm sure many of you guys have seen this one and the reason i'm using this example is just because most of you guys have probably seen it it helps you understand it and it's just a perfect example of what this trick is. So once again, let's say there's an electric law or bandit charge on the wall and you still want to breach the wall. But this time we're actually going to use the floor above the breach and we're actually going to place our exothermic charge on that. And as you can see, once this is detonated, it will then blow open half the wall below. And you'll be able to get a really nice coverage into the bomb site. This is probably the most common practice of this trick itself, but it can also be found on other maps. When I was actually testing for this video, I actually managed to find one on canal as well, placing the thermite charge on this spot will actually open half the wall below, meaning that you can actually get a coverage into sight from the staircase. This would actually be a really helpful strat as well if you brought an Osa along and just had her sitting on the stairs behind the shield. So we've looked at using the wall to the side of the breach, we've looked at using the floor above the breach, now let's take a look at using the floor below the breach. Placing an exothermic charge on the floor beside a breach which has a bandit charge or an electric claw on it will actually open up the bottom of the breach itself. So this is really ideal if it is a bandit charge on the other side because then you can easily shoot them off and then go for a proper opening of the the breach. If it is an electric claw, it gets a bit more trickier because yeah, although you have a hole in the breach, you still don't know where the electric claw is and it still might be out of your line of sight. This now allows you to start nading the breach through this hole. You can send some Twitch drones or a Flores drone in as well, maybe even a Brava drone. Or maybe you might not even want to enter this breach. You can just hold a line of sight through the hole and shoot some feet. But that is basically how you can use thermite to exploit the environment around an electrified reinforced wall. And of course, walls aren't the only things that can be reinforced in this game. Of course, hatches can as well. Thermite can open up two hatches, one hatch each with his exothermic charge. And of course, ever since the introduction of Cade, he can now also electrify hatches. And just the same way that we can exploit the environment around a reinforced wall, we can also do the same thing with a hatch. If the floor beside a hatch is soft, placing a thermite charge beside it will also breach the hatch, regardless if there's an electric law on it. And now with this knowledge, you have just easily increased how effectively you can play thermite. And now we're going to end thermite's little section there, and we're actually going to jump over to the second hard breacher which was added to the game, Habana. Now Habana actually has the X-carry launcher which in total has 18 pellets. You can actually toggle how many of these pellets you can shoot at a time with it being 6, 4 or 2. And in its most simple way, you can shoot these out of the wall and make a vaultable hole for your team to jump through. But I'm actually going to show you guys now that little trick I teased at the beginning of the video, where you can actually make a fully standing walkable breach hole with just 6 pellets from Habana. So what you want to do is set your Cairo pellet launcher to the option where it only shoots 2 pellets at a time. And you're actually going to want to look at the middle part between the two reinforced walls, and start shooting out one side of it where it actually exposes the inside of the wall. Here you're actually going to want to shoot the sets of 2 Cairo pellets into this inner face part of the wall as you can see I'm doing in the clip. 
and you want to keep these close and tight to each other so the hole actually opens very cleanly and doesn't have any bits of the reinforcement still in between it. And then once you do it similar to the way I've done it in the clip, you want to detonate these and as you can see, it will make a perfectly walkable hole. And this only took 6 pellets, meaning that in the same round, you can do this to 2 more sets of double walls. So with this trick with Habana, you can actually open more double walls than Thermite can. And maybe you don't want to use 6 pellets on it and you don't want to make it walkable, you can make an even smaller one at crouch level by just using 4 pellets and not doing those 2 at the top. This is by far one of my favourite tricks with Habana and you don't really see people using this, so definitely try it in your next match. Now here's a classic Habana trick which I've been using for a long time way before I even knew about the previous one and this is actually a perfect crouch level hole which you can actually make with a single set of six. So when you're using the Horizon Kairos launcher you can actually see that there is a little laser on the wall showing you where your pellets are going to land. Following how I'm doing it in this clip you want to line up the laser with one of the red reinforcements which are coming through the wall. Lining the laser up perfectly with one of these where the bottom of the laser is at the bottom of the red reinforcement will create a hole which can be perfectly crouch through. Now sometimes you do get an issue where you rubber band back but then you'll be able to go through so just beware of that. But if you ever want to be able to crouch through a reinforcement with just one set of six, always use this little trick. Now this next trick for Habana isn't really that useful but I just thought it'd be quite cool to show off. I think this can be done in a few locations but the only one I actually know right now is on Bakery on Cafe. And if you come behind this white wardrobe and actually aim your pellets at the wall, as you can see the laser kind of gets messed up and the spread of the pellets is kind of all over the place. And actually shooting here will cause the pellets to bounce off the wardrobe and some of them will kind of get broken and just land elsewhere and then some of them will kind of spread all over the wall. So I guess if you kind of want a random spread of holes in a wall you could do this but I guess Maverick could achieve this much easier as well and you are wasting a lot of utility doing this but I just wanted to show this off because it's a really weird game mechanic and I'm sure not a lot of you guys actually knew it. So let's move over to hatches. Now Habana is known as the queen of hatches for a reason. She is the only operator in the game who can open up four reinforced hatches in one round. To open up a hatch it requires four of Habana's pellets. With a total of 18 pellets, that allows her to open up 4 hatches with 2 pellets left over. Of course, you'll still have to deal with any electric law on the hatch, and it's not as easy to do the thermite trick with hatches as it is with Habana, but if you are capable of clearing the electric laws, it will be smooth sailing for Habana and you'll get all the hatches you desire. This is why she is a really good pick for attacking the bottom floor on bank for example, because that site has a lot of hatches going down into the bottom floor. So I hope those tricks helped you improve your gameplay with Habana, and now we're actually going to move over to the blowtorch guy, Maverick. Now Maverick can be played in many ways, you can simply just make little holes in the wall which he can use his blowtorch on and get some picks through that. But there's also plenty of other ways that you can use a maverick torch to open a reinforced wall. You may have heard of the maverick trick and it's actually quite simple, all you gotta do is from one end to the other at the top of a reinforcement, just use your blowtorch in a straight line. Beat this process at the bottom of the reinforcement and the reinforcement itself will disappear, revealing the soft wall which was once there before. You can try shooting this open yourself or bring along a Zofia, Ash, Buck, Flores etc to open up the soft wall and now you have an open hole even if there is still an electric law on the wall. Maverick can also be used to make smaller holes as well as you can see you can make a tiny little crouchable hole and you can sneak your way on through. You can also do a vaultable hole as well but I'll get into it when we actually look into ace as to why crouchable holes are better than vaultable. And of course very simply with Maverick you can make little holes in the floor to shoot bandit batteries as well but I'm sure I don't have to explain that one to you guys because that is very basic Maverick playing. When it comes to hatches just like Thermite he can open up two hatches however it is quite a bit more dangerous and does take quite a bit of time. But the safest way to do it is just go around the edges of the hatch until the hatch pops open. And this is useful for when they have a Cade and you can't get rid of the electric law, Maverick can still open the hatch since Cade doesn't actually counter Maverick. Now let's take a look at Ace. Very simply with Ace, you throw it at a wall, it makes a hole, you can jump through it. Pretty simple, right? But just like Maverick, there's also a trick where you can make an entire wall soft by using two of your Ace Selma gadgets. This one is extremely simple, all you gotta do is throw one at the top, throw another one at the bottom, and when they both detonate, the wall will become soft. Just like Thermite, however, you can use Ace to exploit the environment around a breach if there is something on the wall which you want to clear, such as a bandit battery. Placing one of his Selmas on the floor beside the breach will cause it to explode, making a little hole at the bottom of the breach, allowing you to shoot any gadget on it, as well as shooting some people's feet. Now what to talk about making a vaultable hole compared to a crouch level one. In the majority of cases, you want to make sure that the hole you're making is crouchable and you can walk through it. Yes, a vaultable hole does do the job, you can still get through the wall from it, but it is much more dangerous. For starters, when you jump through it, the defenders are going to hear that there is a sound it makes when you actually jump through and put your feet back on the ground. You're going to be giving away your position and it's going to be dangerous. As well as this, when you actually jump through one of these holes, you're going to be putting yourself in a little animation and you're kind of going to be locked with how you can look and where your crosshair is going to be. When you go through a crouchable hole, it's just like walking down a hallway. It's not going to put you in an animation and it's not going to make any sound cues, other than the standard footstep sounds that you'll be making anyway. 
So just keep this little fact in mind when you're using honestly anything, whether that's secondary hard breaches, Habana, heck, even making rotates on soft holes. Just want to share a little trick as well. If they are playing an active bandit and you do disable both sides of the bandit battery, bandit is then of course going to have to focus on one wall to start doing his bandit trick. If you are playing ace, placing both Selmas on either wall at the same time is going to overpower bandit because he can only focus on one wall because that's how long his animation takes. So by the time he successfully tricked one of the walls, the hole will be open on the other wall, meaning that you can potentially kill him or scare him off. There's been so many occasions where I've gotten a free kill on a bandit trying to do both walls because they're getting a bit too cocky. And finally when it comes to hatches, Ace is actually the worst hard breacher for hatches because he can only open one because it requires two Selmas to open a hatch. And with a total of three Selmas in his inventory that means he can only do one. And finally let's jump over to the secondary hard breach gadget. This was a very interesting addition to the game and actually not even too long ago they actually buffed it from having one to two and then it also made its deployment time even faster. So it just works like any other hard breach charge, you place it on a hard wall and it makes a hole. But there is still some tricks you can do with it. Firstly, you want to make it a crouchable hole for the most part a lot of the time as well. It's actually really easy to pull off a crouchable hole with these because it will not let you put on the animation until you're at the lowest point available. So starting from the bottom as you look up, the moment it lets you start actually placing it, that's when you're going to want to do it and it will make a perfectly crouchable hole. As well as this, you can place another one on top of it if you want to be able to walk through it without having to crouch. Just like with Thermite, once again, you can exploit the environment around the breach with this as well. You can make tiny little holes at the bottom whilst placing it on the floor beside a breach and any wall beside it as this will once again make the hole in the radius beside it. Of course not to the same effect as thermite but can still be very useful. And finally you can open up two hatches with a secondary hard breach charge which means at the end of the day out of all the hard breachers at the current time of upload in Rainbow Six Siege, Hibana can open up four making her the best. Thermite, Maverick and the hard breach charge are all tied at two and the worst hard breacher in the game to open up any hatches with is Ace only being able to open one. And so so guys, even if you're a veteran player or just a newbie, I hope this video helped you learn more about hard breaching in the game and hopefully allowed you to think outside the box a little bit and hopefully you take this into your next match when you do play Rainbow Six Siege. Really interested to hear everyone's thoughts in the comment section below so definitely drop a comment, drop a like on this video if you did enjoy this like if you did not, subscribe if you're a new because it took a lot of effort to research and make this video. Anyway guys, have an incredible rest of your day, I love you all, stay safe, peace.